I've got my backpack portable setup all put together here on the windowsill at one of the stations that I work out of about 15 miles away from home. And I've got to be a bit quiet because the crew that was on last night got their butts kicked, so they're still sleeping. But today I want to talk about sending telemetry by FSQ. And this topic has fascinated me ever since I learned about FSQ because you can pull small text files from distant stations and get information that way. And I think this unlocks a lot of possibilities for unleashing the maximum potential out of our digital comm system. So I'm going to be talking about this in terms of three tiers. Tier three, which is what we'll talk about today, will be information that you generate with your computer from its internal sensors. I want to show you how this looks and how it's used, and then I'll show you how to set it up. So I've already established that I have a good connection with home. And so I'll right click on my home stations call sign in the herd list there, and I'll go down to read file from it. And when I select that, a dialog pops up and it'll ask me for a file name. And I'm gonna type in the name of the file that I know is sitting in the very specific folder that FSQ is able to pull from. This is a file that I've set up to write the processor temperature to a text file once per minute of my home station. And I'll go ahead and speed up the video here so you don't have to sit through the boring part. Fifty nine point nine degrees Celsius. That is the temperature of my home computer's processor within one minute of me pulling that file. And I'm like 15 miles away. How cool is that? So the next file I'm going to pull is the uptime. And I've written that to the file uptime.txt. Uptime gives us a couple of cool pieces of information, and you'll see that here in just a second. Very good. Experienced Linux users will notice that this is the exact same output as if you type the word uptime into a terminal window, and this gives us a couple really good metrics. On the left is the uptime since the last restart or startup, and in this case it's 10 hours and 15 minutes. So this could be really helpful if you're trying to troubleshoot a station that you think might be resetting itself, but you don't have access to it directly. On the right is the load average, and I'm not going to go into all the details of how the load averages work, but my numbers look pretty good. Now, if you want to send a file, it's just as easy. Right-click on your target station and go to Send File, and then select it from this dialog here. Be aware there does seem to be a glitch in FSQ where after sending or retrieving files, it kind of locks up and it prevents that normal keyboard to keyboard communication. If you encounter this, just click this T slash R button in the bottom right corner that transmits your call sign and it seems to clear out that glitch. FSQ only has access to pull files from one very specific folder on your computer, and that's really good because then other stations don't have total free reign over your system. So open up your file browser here and click dot fl digi if you don't see that go up to your view menu and select show hidden files but we're going to go here into dot fl digi and it is in the temp folder this is the only folder where fsq can pull files from so all of the information that you just saw is information we can pull for our own systems by typing these various commands into the terminal so here we'll type uptime you'll see it's the exact same information as i just pulled from my home system so type uptime and there it is. Now, the trick is to write that to file at regular intervals. And for that, we are going to use crontab by typing sudo crontab, C-R-O-N-T-A-B dash E. Crontab is a very powerful tool in Linux so that we can run various processes automatically at intervals that we direct. If you haven't used crontab before, it will ask you what type of editor you want to use. I recommend the nano editor. So you scroll to the bottom of it and follow the instructions that it gives you. It's pretty helpful. And you just start adding lines. So that top line that I have added, you can see the asterisks there. That indicates what type of interval that the computer should run this command at. And those are kind of tough. Those are tricky. So I'll put a website in the show notes below that will help you out with that. But you can see uptime, and then I use the greater than symbol. And then I put in that whole file pathway followed by uptime.txt. That's going to write that to file exactly in that special FSQ folder every 15 minutes in that case. And it's going to overwrite the information that was in there the last time, so we don't have a bunch of old data sitting around. I additionally have this other command, and it's a long one. I'll put it in the show notes below, and that will write the temperature to file every minute. Now, the pathway to that special FSQ folder is kind of long, there's an opportunity for error there, so I recommend going into your file browser and just highlighting this, copying it, and pasting it right in. And that eliminates a lot of opportunity for error. Once you're all done, hit Control-X, Y, 
and punch enter. You shouldn't have to reboot. This stuff should take effect right away. I'll drop a link in the show notes below to that CronTab helper website, and I'll also write down the commands that I use in case you want to cut and paste. Now, here's where the fun part comes in. I'm not a Linux expert. I know a few things. I know how to put the uptime and the processor temp, but I guarantee that there's more. And so what I want to hear from you in the comments below is if you've got ideas for any other information that we could write to file. Now, we are limited to about 125 characters before you know things get a little weird with FSQ, but I am really excited to see what all ideas you have and what you come up with.